the shadows, bound for the gallows. A dead man walking, so love came calling. Rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. Six feet under, I thought it was over. And answered a prayer, the voice of a savior. Rise up. Welcome, and thank you again for uh, joining us online again this week. Uh, before we begin our service, we want to take a moment to pause and to reflect upon Remembrance Day. In a couple days, as a nation, we will stop and we will pause. We'll reflect and we'll remember the many men and women who made the ultimate sacrifice of giving their lives for the benefit of others. Perhaps there are families that are watching here today that have individuals serving overseas as well. We too want to recognize their service. And so I'm just going to simply invite us to just where you are, where you're sitting, to take a moment to, to pause, to be silent, and to use it as a means of remembering those who sacrificed, those who gave their lives for the benefit of others. Let us pray. And so our Father, as we think of the many lives that were lost, we give thanks for those who have given the ultimate sacrifice for the benefit of others. We pray that we would not forget, that we would continue to remember, that their example would remind us of the importance of sacrificing for the benefit of others. We pray as well, Lord, for those families that have loved ones that have been lost, perhaps loved ones who are away serving. May you comfort them and may you strengthen them. For we ask it all, Jesus, in your name. Amen. As we continue in our service, we are going to sing a, a song, Lord, Heal Our Land. And in many ways, I think it's so appropriate because the lives that were lost, the, the wars that were fought, were unable to bring about a sense of peace. Ultimately, that peace is found in Jesus, the one who is the Prince of Peace. And so may this song become our prayer, that God would continue to heal our land. So glad that you are joining us this week. We, we hope that this time together is helpful, is meaningful, and enables you, wherever you are, whatever you believe, to take that next step to experiencing more of Jesus in your life. Have a great rest of your week. You take our lives, flawed yet beautiful, restore, refine, Lord, you're merciful.
last few weeks we have been uh, talking about prayer or put another way our conversations with God and as I've said most weeks uh, I say again that that for many of us we may come from different places Uh, for some of you prayer is a natural part of your life it's a key component when it comes to your faith for others prayer might be a bit of a struggle Uh, you may wonder you know what exactly do I say is it okay to ask for things for some, prayer might be a little bit more seasonal, that kind of comes and goes, that, that when there is a kind of a desperate need, when it is obvious, uh, then you pray, but then it kind of fritters away a little bit. For others, even talking about prayer kind of brings a sense of guilt, of like, great, this is yet another thing that I don't do well or I'm not doing it at all. And so you start to feel a little bit guilty about it. My hope is that regardless of where you land on that spectrum, that there's a next step for you. Because as I continue to learn in my life, prayer is this this conversation with God. And that as we begin to talk more with God, we not only begin to experience more of who he is, but more of what he wants for us in the midst of our lives as well. And here's the really good news. If you are someone that struggles with prayer, you are not alone. Actually, the whole context of this series is based on the reality that one day after Jesus was done praying, One of his disciples, so one of the people who had been close to Jesus, walked up to him and said, basically, Jesus, will you teach us how to pray? Because clearly they realized that Jesus was doing something. He had a connection with the Father that they were missing out on. And so that's been the whole basis of our series, is going back to the words that Jesus then spoke to this disciple and others, as he presented to them what is often referred to as the Lord's Prayer, not as a mantra for us just to repeat over and over and over again, but rather as a model, as a template, for us to begin to understand what can prayer look like so that it begins to encompass and incorporate all of life. 
And so to kind of refresh our memories, uh, maybe you've forgotten it, or maybe you're joining us for the very first week, we're actually going to jump into the Lord's Prayer that is found in Luke's Gospel. It's also found in Matthew, where we've been going the last couple of weeks. But this week, we're going to jump into Luke chapter 11, and beginning in verse 1, here we go. It says, Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, this is how you should pray. Father, may, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. If you're more familiar with the Matthews version, you, you realize that Luke is a little bit more streamlined. He just kind of jumps right to the point. But as a bit of a recap, we start to realize that in Jesus teaching us to pray, what he wants us to do is to refocus our thoughts. So often, if you're like me, when I think of prayer, I think of me coming to God with what I need, with what I want to tell him, essentially making the ask. And what Jesus does amazingly is he essentially says, don't start there, but rather begin your conversation focusing upon God. I mean, let's be honest, that's just good life principles at work. Think of any conversation you have with someone else. If they're always only talking about themselves, it can be a little bit much. And I wonder and I worry that oftentimes that is the reality for me when it comes to my conversations with God. And so that's why I appreciate the Lord's Prayer. That's why I appreciate what Jesus is teaching. He reminds us, listen, listen, start first with your focus upon God, our Father in heaven. May your name be holy. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. It's right there that Jesus says, make your focus first upon God, about building his kingdom, about following his will. And then Jesus gets into kind of the, the middle part where I think many of us want to go. And that is where it comes to the ask. I found myself in conversations with people on two different spectrums. Some may wonder, can I even ask anything of God? I mean, I almost feel guilty making an ask. And then there's others who seemingly that is all they talk to God about. And so where do we land? Can we make asks? Can we make requests of God? Because in the middle section, Jesus essentially says, give us this day our daily bread. And that's where I want to focus our attention today. This, this whole idea, this, this whole concept of daily bread. Now, the first question that maybe you're wondering is, do we just literally take this, do, do we take this literally? Is Jesus saying that every day we get up and we pray for our daily bread? Let's be honest. The majority, if not all of us watching this, probably don't wake up in the morning and think that if God doesn't show up, I'm going to have nothing to eat today, tomorrow, or the next day. For many of us, we live in a culture of excess. That, that we have not only enough, but likely even more than we need. And so we can oftentimes skip right through this. We can oftentimes be, land in a place of, of not recognizing our ultimate need for God. You see, what's interesting about this line is what Jesus is doing below the surface is far more insignificant. That, that Jesus ultimately, when he says, give us this day our daily bread, this is not us really necessarily initially making an ask of God, but really a declaration of dependence. That every day, if we are to say, give us this day our daily bread, we are landing at a place of recognizing we are dependent upon God. That God is at the center of everything. I think for a lot of us, we, we land in those places seasonally in our lives. When we find ourselves in difficulty, when we find ourselves in a troubled place, suddenly we, we, we recognize our need for God. But, but how often do we regularly, do we daily position ourselves in such a way that we recognize our dependency upon Him? You see, this line, give us this day our daily bread, is far, far more than us just simply making an ask of God. It's us recognizing, God, I am dependent upon you for everything. And I love how, how Jesus uses the idea of bread. 
because food, sustenance, is, is the basics for us to survive, for us to live. And so Jesus is essentially saying, are, are we able to pray this? Are, are we able to live and to pray in such a way that we recognize our dependency upon God? You see what Jesus did yet again. He takes the focus off of ourselves and places it back again on the Father. So what does this look like? I mean, back to our original question, can we ask God for stuff? And if we can, what does it look like? Let's jump back into the passage. Because after Jesus' short model on the Lord's Prayer, he, he tells two stories that in many ways really highlights an even greater truth of making an ask of God. We're going to jump back into Luke 11, beginning in verse 5. It says, Then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose he went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, A friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, Don't bother me! The door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. For anyone who asks receives, anyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks the door will be opened. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Two real interesting stories that, that Jesus tells. But I believe it's in these stories that, that, that he again begins to highlight two important things for us. The first one is why we make ass of God in the first place. And the second thing is how we actually make these asks of God. So let's back it up. Let's land again at this place of why do we make ass of God in the first place? As I mentioned earlier, it's, it's ultimately for us to declare and to recognize that we are dependent upon God. In our society, I think too often we bow down to the idol of self-sufficiency. We think that I have made it on my own. I can do it on my own. But in uttering this prayer daily, we are reminding ourselves that we are dependent upon God. I love the imagery that that Jesus pulls out for us when it it comes to the Lord's Prayer. It begins with our Father. One of the great images that we are given is that God is our Heavenly Father. I know in my own life, my understanding and my relationship with God increased significantly once I began to have children of my own. Because I quickly realized that one of the primary realities for me as a father was to provide for my kids, to give them the basic things, to give them the things that they could not figure out on their own. Sometimes this this teaching of Jesus is misunderstood. When he talks about how the friend goes to his neighbor and makes a request of him, And that ultimately, his neighbor only relents and gives in because he will not go away. Listen, Jesus is not saying, if we pester and bug God, then he'll give in. He's saying, listen, if this is what your neighbor will do, how much more will your heavenly Father do this for you? I know in my life, if someone shows up at my door in the middle of night, late at night, knocking on the door, texting me, calling me, I'll probably respond, but I'm likely not going to be uberly favorable to them. I'll likely be like, is it really this big of a deal? Can't you go away? Can't we talk about this in the morning? And if you keep going and going and going, 
probably not out of graciousness, but just to get you on your way, I will help you out. But if my kids show up in my room, or when they move out, call me on the phone, I'm getting out of bed. I'm answering their requests in that moment. I'm likely not saying, no, 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 just go to bed. We'll figure it out in the morning. No, they have my attention. Why? Because I'm their dad. I share that relationship with them. And that's why Jesus is telling us this story. He's like, listen, listen, this is your heavenly father that you are praying to. And so, and so why do we come to God and ask for our daily bread? Not just because it shows our dependence upon God, but it reminds us again of how God loves us, how God cares for us, how God wants to provide good things for us. The second thing that, that I believe Jesus wants us to understand is, is not just simply why we ask things of God, but how we ask of God. Jesus kind of lays out for us, again, through this image of, of a father and a child, three things that are so helpful for me when it comes to prayer. The first thing is that when we ask of God, be specific. Okay, listen, we're not specific because we need to tell God what it is that we need. Remember in, in Matthew, Jesus says God already knows what you need even before you ask. And so we are specific for our benefit. I love how when Jesus tells a story, when the friend goes to his neighbor needing to find food, he doesn't just simply say, hey, just give me whatever you have, or just give me some food, or just give me some bread. No, he says, give me three loaves of bread. What? Why would Jesus include that? It's because Jesus is reminding us to be specific. So, so why do we need to be specific in prayer? I think it's for our benefit. One is it gives us clarity in terms of what it is we're actually asking for. The more specific I become, the more I start to pull back a little bit and say, is this really what I need from God? But the second thing is it actually helps me see how God is working in my life and providing answered prayer. Here's the problem with general prayers. How do you actually know when they're even been answered? I mean, when this guy went to his neighbor and said, I need three loaves of bread, and he got three loaves of bread, he knew exactly that his request had been answered. I think the same thing is true for us. That when we pray specifically to God, not only does it give us clarity, but it helps us to see how God is the one who answers prayer. The second thing I would say is that when we pray, be bold in our ask. Again, back to the story that Jesus taught. I love how he goes in the middle of the night and he is bold in asking for bread. He came at midnight and even after he had been shushed and told go away, he would not stop asking. Let me ask you, how bold are your prayers? Or are you praying too safe? I think it's oftentimes when we get specific, when we begin to get bold, that we start to see God at work in our lives. Are we praying and asking God to do the things that only he can do? So when we ask, are we specific? Are we bold? And then finally, and I think this is one of the biggest game changers for me when it comes to making requests of God. It is this, don't limit your ask in two ways. And this is why I want to end here, because I believe that this is one of the biggest takeaways when it comes to praying, give us this day our daily bread, to not limit our ask. I think oftentimes we can limit our ask in two ways. The first way is we make it only about ourselves. You notice when Jesus taught this, he says, give us our daily bread, not give me my daily bread. Jesus is always about the community. He's always about the corporate prayer. And so I want to step back and ask myself the question, am I limiting my prayers by simply only praying for myself? Or am I including others? 
I'll give you a practical example. When it comes to me praying for the kingdom of God, that I see God's will done, I make darn sure that I don't just simply pray for Paris Presbyterian Church, but I pray for Cedarview. I pray for Sojourn. I pray for the Baptist Church. I pray for the United Church. I pray for the Catholic Church. We, we are in this together. I don't want my prayers to be limited to just myself. The second thing is don't limit your prayers to only the obvious needs. Notice at the very end, in verse 13, Jesus says this, How much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Now, if you've been following along, you're like, wait a second, wait a second. Jesus starts talking about bread. Now he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Like, what, what, what is the deal? Jesus, you've kind of lost me. Back to that image again of a father and a child. Listen, as a father, I provide my kids, obviously with the basics, with food, clothing, and shelter. By not doing those things, that does not, that, 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 that makes me a, a bad dad. But by simply giving food, clothing, and shelter, it doesn't make me a good dad either. Because kids need far more than just the physical needs met. Kids need love, belonging, nurturing, forgiveness, grace, wisdom. They, 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 they need us to come alongside them in the midst of all of life. They don't just simply need their physical needs met. They need their emotional, their spiritual. They, they need a dad to be holistic to them. And what you start to realize is as your kids get older, and eventually move out, they don't really need your food, clothing, and shelter anymore. But you know what they never outgrow? The need to be accepted, to be loved, to be given wisdom, for you to be in their corner. And no matter how old they become, those needs never diminish. What about when it comes to our relationship with our Heavenly Father? Obviously, we're going to ask for the physical things. When we need healing. When we need provision. When we need protection. But when Jesus says the Father will give the Holy Spirit, more of the Holy Spirit to those who ask, he's speaking to something far more significant. And it ties into praying for our daily bread. Jesus refers to himself as the bread of life. And so when we begin to pray for our daily bread, we're not only praying for the physical necessities, we're praying for more of Jesus. Jesus says, I have come so you may have the abundant life. And that is not found simply in God providing for our physical needs, but providing for our spiritual needs as well. So when it comes to prayer, when it comes to our ass, don't limit them just to the obvious physical things. Recognize how daily you are dependent upon God and you need the work of the Holy Spirit. You need more of Jesus in your life. This week, no matter where you land on prayer, whether it's easy or it's a struggle, will, will you focus on this phrase, Give us this day our daily bread. And may it be an opportunity for you to be reminded again of how you are dependent upon God and that he is your loving Heavenly Father who delights in giving you good gifts. And so when you ask, be specific, be bold, and don't limit your asks of him. As we wrap up, let me, let me pray. Let me land on this line of the prayer and begin to see how this can become a reality for us as well. Let us pray. And so our Father, we give thanks that you are the one in heaven 
that you are the one that is ultimately in control. As we think of the ask of give us this day our daily bread, may we be mindful that we are dependent upon you. May we run from the idea of self-sufficiency, of just thinking that, that we can do it on our own. May we recognize our need for you. May we see you as our loving Heavenly Father, the one who delights in giving good gifts. And so, Lord God, as we come to you this day, may may we be mindful of of how you give us not only our, our physical needs, but ultimately you are the one, you are the only one who can give us purpose who can provide for our spiritual needs as well. And so we ask all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so now may the Lord bless you and keep you. Now may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious towards you. Now may the Lord look to you always, always, and give you his hope, his love, his peace, his joy today and in all of your tomorrows. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.